Hey there, everybody. Welcome to the Tool for Forza YouTube channel. Captain Nasty's right here. And this video today is going to be my comparison between the HP Reverb and the Valve Index. And this video is specific for people that are doing flight sims and driving sims. So if you're looking for a video that's an overall review of them that includes room scale VR, this is not the right video for you. If you're a sim racer or a flight sim guy, this is definitely the place to be if you want to help making a decision on what headset should you buy. And they're very different headsets and they kind of fit two different applications very well, luckily. Uh, so hopefully this video will help you make a buying decision. And that's the overall goal. <clears throat> so let me just start by saying there's going to be a lot of data and technical information in this video. There's not going to be a lot of gameplay. It's not going to be the most entertaining thing you've ever seen. But it's going to be a very informative video. Uh, so that being said, let's go ahead and jump right on into it. So the test computer that was used is worth mentioning. It's an i9900K at 5 gigahertz with 16 gigabits of RAM at 4.4 gigahertz and a 2080 video card. So this is on a strong computer. You do not need a computer this strong to run these headsets uh, particularly, but uh, you will need, I would say, at least a 2070 um, and, you know, depending on the, the application, uh, a fast processor as well. So now that that's out of the way, uh, I tested these primarily on Assetto Corsa and on IL-2 Sturmovic. Those are the titles I play the most. And on IL-2 Sturmovic is very demanding on the CPU and RAM, but you can benchmark in IL-2. Uh, so we'll talk about some benchmarking data. And uh, the way that works in IL-2 is you can actually put the plane on autopilot and have it fly a scripted mission where everything happens the same every time, so there's no variables. So that's a really good way to benchmark. So uh, benchmarking video. Um, previously, I'll put a link here. And I'll also put a link to uh, the, some of the, the crazy live stream we did where we just um, videotaped and live streamed just a very small section of some of the testing. I spent about 12 hours with the uh, Valve Index testing that, and I've got <clears> – <throat> something like um, 80 hours already on my HP Reverb. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we're going to start with technical specs, and then we're going to talk about some of the more subjective stuff. And the reason I'm not going to do gameplay is because when you look at gameplay from a screen, it doesn't reflect the image quality or really add any value to the true VR experience. You kind of either have to have the headset on yourself, which if you're watching the video, you probably don't have both these headsets, uh, or you have to kind of listen to someone explain the differences. So that's the value I'm going to try to add with some detailed explanations on how you know, different things work that you could not see with gameplay. So for technical specs, the HP Reverb has a native resolution of 21 by 60 by 21 by 60. So it's, it's by far the most high-res consumer headset available on the market today. It's a much higher resolution than the Valve Index at its native resolution, which is 1440 by 1600. That's the same resolution as a um, Samsung Odyssey. Uh, it is higher than a Rift CV1. It is slightly higher than also the Rift S as well. So the number of pixels that are being rendered at the native resolution is about 9.3 million on the HP Reverb. It's only about 4.6 million on the Valve Index. But in order to conduct this test correctly, we super sampled the Valve Index to try to get the maximum clarity and performance out of it because we wanted this to be a true user-based you know, video uh, that talks about the experiences, like what you're going to actually see. So what's important here is we see the next column down, which is pixels as tested. So we left the HP Reverb as close as we could get to its native resolution in Steam VR, where it's approximately 9.3 or 9.4 million pixels. For the Valve Index, we tested that at a range of super sampling levels. On IL-2, you have to run a little bit less super sampling around 10 and a half million total pixels and for the uh, sim racing we ended up at about 14 million pixels and it still ran really well even pushing all those pixels which I was really impressed by so you can see that clearly here the HP Reverb wins hands down on resolution and in, in, in image clarity uh, you know it's a, it's a big step up from the index uh, which again is is essentially you know got the similar optics very similar uh, to the Samsung Odyssey uh, now what's massively different on these two headsets as well is the field of view. But in this category, the index pulls way ahead here. So the Reverb has a field of view of about 114 degrees. Uh, it feels more like 110. It's pretty comparable to a Rift CV1. I feel like the lower range of like if you're not moving your head but looking down with your eyes is actually a little bit less than the CV1 on the Reverb, but it's not an issue. Now, that being said, it's 130 plus or minus on the Valve Index, depending on how you adjust the lenses to how close you get them to your eyes. And it's much, much, much better. Uh, it's, 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 the field of view is, is way better on the index than it is on the reverb, period. 
So let's talk about the lens dimensions because after experiencing these headsets, I actually, and you could look at, look at the lenses and see they're so much bigger in the index. So I actually cut down a little plastic ruler and we measured the, uh, the lenses at their widest points. The lenses, the lenses are not square, uh, but this is the measurements from the widest points horizontally and vertically. So it was 41.3 millimeters on the reverb for each lens, and it's 47.6 by 50.8 on the valve index. So that's an increase of 42% in square millimeters if these were square headsets, which they're not. But the point is the lenses are a hell of a lot bigger in the index and that has to contribute to that additional very good field of view. Uh, but it also probably contributes uh, you know, to the clarity and the resolution not, not, not quite being matched. Uh, again, the HP Reaver has, has much better clarity and image quality. So that's the story with, I think the two most important things in the headset, field of view and resolution. Now let's talk about refresh rates. Uh, the HP Reverb has one option, 90, uh, and that's kind of the industry standard. I know the Rift S does 80, which is pretty cool too. It, I, it would be nice to have a choice between 80 and 90, honestly, and that's what the Valve Index provides. You have four different options. You can run it at 80 frames, 90 frames, 120, and all the way up to 144, and there is a noticeable difference in just even an IL-2 Cervic. I was in the hangar and just like snapping my head around real fast, and going from even 90 to 144, you can totally tell the difference. It was really cool. And hopefully when computers are much better, you'll actually be able to run the index at those very high frame rates and also have this uh, super sampling turned way up. But uh, there's not a computer on the market that currently you know, that you could build that would run an index at 144 frames with the super sampling pushed way up. So that's really interesting. That's another big advantage that the Valve Index has. Let's talk about prices tested. They're the same. Uh, you can get the Valve Index for $650. You do not get any controllers, but you do get one lighthouse, which is all you need for tracking. The tracking works very well uh, on the Index. It's actually it's flawless. Uh, but the tracking on the Reverb is also flawless, even though it does inside-out tracking. It doesn't have lighthouses. It actually has much better tracking than I was expecting. So I'd say they both are flawless. There's no room for improvement on either one of these headsets as it relates to tracking, which is a good thing because tracking is super, super important. So uh, I kind of mentioned that for the price, you don't get any controllers with the Index. You do get two controllers with the Reverb at the $650 price point for the Pro version, which is the version that I have. So for the FPS performance benchmark, the uh, HP Reverb, I was really happy that it hit 88 FPS on, on my particular benchmark, which again, you can see in some of the videos I've done previously, I posted links to, which was really nice at native resolution. That's really crucial. Of course, with the Valve Index, you can you know set it to 80 and turn up the super sampling or set it to 90 and turn it down a bit. You can get it to kind of wherever you want. So you have more options on how, how the the um, index is going to perform and if your computer is, is on the borderline that might be a reason to kind of lean towards the index as well because you have more choices let's move on to some subjective remarks here so these are things that aren't just like numbers statistics you know th these are my opinion on things and this isn't just my opinion this is my, the opinion of my buddy uh, Alex who also came over and helped me do some of this testing so ease of setup the HP reverb is not easy to set up you have to install two programs through Steam you have to in install a little Windows registry exe that luckily it's produced by Windows so uh, the keyboard and mouse work if you don't install that you have to hit win plus y to make your mouse work while you're in VR which is really annoying uh, but it's easy again you install one program it just takes a few minutes it's easy to do and then to enable reprojection with the reverb you also have to go and actually edit a, a, a file with the C++ program so um, I don't have the video done yet but in the future I'll put a link up here on kind of how to set up your index or sorry your reverb for the first time because it's certainly not straightforward at least for the type of you know sim titles and the things that all the people that are watching this video are going to be doing the index is totally opposite you install one program and you're good to go so again this is an area where the index you know it, it wins out over the reverb facial interface comfort so the HP reverb is very comfortable I've had it on for more or less six and a half hours not totally straight but I did a long day of basically flying all day and had the index on um, I'm sorry, the reverb on, and it was super, it was comfortable, it didn't give me any problems, it was no issue, but the index is like next level, it's, it's got nice foam, the adjustability is quite a bit better, it just feels like it was made by a VR enthusiast, so I really like the facial interface comfort, it's certainly better on the index, but the reverb, is, it's passable, it's fine, there's no glaring issues at all. For head comfort, it's the same thing. Um, the, the straps and the mounting system I actually really like on the, the reverb, um, but the cable absolutely sucks. So I'll put up a picture of the cable here. I don't know why they did this design. Um, 
It's got this relatively stiff and, you know, I'll call it a double barrel cable. There's basically two cables that go into a plug that's about 8 inches, 10 inches from your head. Uh, again, it's just, that's the worst thing about the reverb. It's not a necessarily a deal killer for me, but I could see some people being really annoyed by that. It just seems like a dumb engineering decision. The Index doesn't have any of that. It's super comfortable. And again, it just beats out the, the uh, index here, the reverb here for sure. The index is definitely better than the reverb on, on also on, on head comfort. For adjustability, this is the main place where the reverb gets absolutely destroyed by the index. So, you know, you can adjust the straps and get it on your head and it's comfortable. It's just fine. It, it's, it feels good. There's no issues. But the index is just, it's like next level. You can see I see, keep saying next level over here for index because you can tell that, <clears throat> again, the, the enthusiasts really were involved in the you know design of, of the index for sure it has a manual ipd slider which is another thing that the reverb you have to adjust the ipd adjustment through the software which is certainly not ideal it's much better to be able to just have that that manual slider on the bottom you know it's, it's just like how a rift cv1 has it's really really great the way the index works like that you can also adjust the head strap very easily with a knob and you can adjust how close the lenses are to your eyes which means you can increase or decrease the field of view or maybe even make room for glasses uh, again so the index blows absolutely blows the um, reverb away when it comes to adjustability for screen door effect so this is a place where I'm going to get some thumbs downs in this video uh, and that's okay because I'm not here to get thumbs ups I'm here to tell you guys the truth so the screen door effect on the index to me was not as reduced as I expected to be after using the HP Reverb and after coming off of a CV1. The screen door effect is still definitely present. It's definitely detectable and um, it's still there. And it is much better than a CV1, but it's definitely still there. The Reverb, there's almost no screen door effect. You really have to be looking for it. And um, it's a so if you were to compare the improvement in screen door from going from a CV1 to an index, <clears throat> You know, let's say maybe <clears throat> it, it's 50% better. Well, if you were to compare the screen door effect from a CV1 Rift to a reverb, it's like 100% better. I mean, it's just, it, it really does kind of blow the index away here in screen door effect. Um, that's, just, that's just the way it is. And that's a reflection of the lenses, of the, the display, uh, and the high resolution, native resolution that the, uh, that the reverb has. Let's move on to some other subjective stuff. So color. So I think these both are a tie when it comes to color. The color is super good. The contrast is excellent. Uh, most reviewers seem to think the index is a little bit better. And Alex, who was over here testing, also thought the, uh, the index was better. So I'll say in this video that I'm going to go with them um, and say that maybe the color is slightly better on the index, but it's not like a massive delta between the two. They're pretty comparable. Uh, for Mira. So what Mira is, is when you're looking at things and pixels that are next to each other that should be the same color or not. I detected no visible color uh, d distortion on either one of these headsets, so I don't think Mira um, is an issue. There's no clear loser here, uh, but there's no clear winner. They both just looked really good. So lens sweet spot. So the sweet spot is definitely larger in the uh, index than it is in the reverb. And, uh-oh. And, um, that, that probably has to do with just the size, overall size of the lenses, giving you, you know, more area that, that's going to be perhaps in that sweet spot. I'd say that the reverb sweet spot is pretty comparable to a CV1. If you kind of start really looking to the edges of the screen without moving your head, it does. It's definitely not as clear as the center, but it also looks like it's less clear because the resolution is so good in the sweet spot on the reverb that looking outside of it, it becomes very apparent. So I think that's a factor as well, because you tend to hear people say, oh, the sweet spot's really small. Well, I think the sweet spot's really, really good in the uh, reverb as well. So that's something to consider there. In terms of glare, God rays, this is when you're looking at a black background with like white lettering on it. Both these headsets performed better than I expected them to uh, in regards to glare. I don't think there's a clear winner or loser here. It's really just not an issue. Like if you're in a menu like IL-2 and there's a huge black background, there's big white letters, there's a little bit of, you know, small amount of like maybe f white, you know, fuzz or kind of glare coming off of them, but it's, it's really not an issue. It's honestly not even worth talking about anymore, so I'm not going to. So here's the conclusion. Um, the resolution is the current weak point of, of VR headsets, essentially. Now, the HP Reverb pretty much changes that. I think the Reverb is very close to looking at a high-resolution monitor, for sure. Uh, it's unmatched here. It really is unmatched. It's much, much better than the Index. It's just the way it is. Now, that being said, the FOV is the next most important thing, and the Index provides a much better FOV than the Reverb in real-world usage. So now, now we're having trouble making a decision here. 
The index blows the reverb away in regards to comfort, adjustability, and has many features that are innovative and interesting that users will find beneficial. I'll say the one thing uh, that the index loses out on is weight. And I'll explain why that's important as well. The index is relatively heavy and it's kind of long. So the weight's got leverage on your head, whereas the reverb is super light. It's very compact. The reverb is smaller than a CB1. Color, mirror, glare, not an issue. Great performance, not worth talking about when it comes to comparing these two headsets. Maybe we'll say the index is slightly better. They both are more than passable and really they look, they look fantastic. So here's the bottom line. If you're into air combat sims and put a premium on resolution above everything else, Get the reverb for sure. For spotting planes, for identifying planes, or for looking really far down a racetrack, you will not be able to match the performance of the reverb with the index, no matter how much super sampling you do. If you're into sim racing and general aviation, personally, I would say just get the index because that bigger field of view really helps with getting that sense of speed. You feel less like you're in a VR headset and you are a little bit more immersed in, in the index just because the FOV is so good and because it's so comfy for sure. Now, if you're snapping your head around and doing air combat, that's why you want the lightweight uh, reverb as well. You know, when you're looking here and snapping to check six, you can definitely feel that index kind of moving on your face. Whereas the reverb, if you have it on there tight, it's so light, it just doesn't want to move or you don't feel it at all. Um, so that's essentially it. I'm going to keep the reverb because I'm just going to tough it out in regards to all the other areas that the index cannot, you know, is much better adjustability, comfort, you know, f refresh rate, all this other crap. I've got a really strong computer. It runs this reverb really, really well. I'm just going to tough it out. And that's it for this video. If you can tough it out and you really value resolution, I say get the reverb. If you kind of want the better all around headset that, that has almost every other category winning except for resolution, you know, then, uh, then get the index. Hopefully this video is valuable. If you found it so, please give me a like and a subscription. We're going to do lots more interesting videos like this in the future. And come find us in Discord for flyouts on IL-2 Stormovic and for sim racing on Assetto Corsa. This is Captain Nasties, over and out.